a four-year-old girl goes missing from her bedroom, and her well-to-do parents and two nannies fall under suspicion. On March 22, 2010, Paulette Gabara Farah was found to be missing when the little girl's nanny went to wake her up and found an empty bed. Where did she go? The family lived in a high-rise apartment. There was no way she could have escaped through a window. There were no signs of forced entry, and the family owned two dogs who did not once bark at night. It was impossible for anyone to come in or out without someone noticing. And yet, Paulette had vanished. Nine days later, the girl's decomposing body is discovered in her own bed, even though the home supposedly has been sealed off by the police. How could this have happened? How did Paulette magically disappear and strangely appear dead in her own bed, even when her high-raised apartment was sealed? Today in this video, we are going to dive into the events of this bizarre mystery, which also inspired Netflix's newest based on a true crime mystery, The Search. On the night of March 21, 2010, Four-year-old Paulette Gabara Farah was put to bed as usual by her mother, Lizette Farah. In the morning, when her nanny Erica came to wake her, she had vanished. There was no evidence at the scene which gave any clues about what happened to Paulette. CCTV from outside the family home showed no sign of her leaving the property, and her parents said she wouldn't leave the house alone as she had a physical disability and a language disorder. Paulette had recently returned from a trip with her father, Mauricio Gabara, and her sister. However, her mother had gone on a trip with her friend, Amanda De La Rosa, who was also the mother's lover with multiple other men. The family lived in a high-rise apartment, so she couldn't have left through a window, and there was no evidence of a break-in or struggle. The family also owned two dogs, and neither made a noise during the night to alert them to any sort of disturbance. The local community all came together to search for Paulette, but nothing was found. Alberto Buzzbaz, the attorney general of the state, became involved and launched what would become a huge nine-day intensive search and investigation. His involvement became the initial controversy. Many children are said to be reported missing in Mexico, but it wasn't until Paulette Gabara Farah, from a richer family, went missing that authorities put all their resources into finding her. The LA Times reported that the story was more captivating than a drug war in Mexico and received more attention than a recent earthquake in the region. The parents received lots of support when they appeared on television to report that Paulette had disappeared after she was put to bed in their apartment in Interlomas. Supporters publicized the case through Twitter and Facebook and on billboards along some of Mexico City's biggest avenues. All the support and publicity that the Gabara family received was soon going to turn into negative publicity and the support would take the shape of blame and suspicions towards the Gabara family itself. A week after the disappearance, it was announced that the girl's parents and nannies were into custody. The first suspect identified in the case was Lizette. The stories which Paulette's parents and the nannies shared had inconsistencies, and the media and public began to become suspicious. There were undercover recordings of Paulette's parents and their other daughter found. These apparently contained a conversation that sounded like Lizette telling her daughter not to admit anything to the investigators, otherwise she'd get in trouble. On March 31, 2010, to everybody's shock, Paulette's body was strangely discovered in her own room. She was found in a space between her mattress and the foot of the bed. The bizarre part was, her room had previously been investigated and searched using trained dogs. Hence, it was extremely strange for the body to have been discovered there, nine days after her disappearance. The autopsy ruled that Paulette's death was an accident. Paulette had seemingly rolled to the foot of the bed 
and accidentally fell and lodged herself in the gap between the mattress and footboard. She then suffocated to death. According to the reports at the time, the autopsy showed that Paulette died via asphyxiation that obstructed the respiratory airways and compressed the abdominal thorax. There were no drugs or toxic substances found in her body, nor any signs of physical abuse. Alberto Buzz believed that Paulette's body hadn't been moved. The position the child was in when she was found was the same as the position she was in when she died. That is the original and final position are the same, claimed Alberto. Obviously, the public was not convinced. Multiple theories were floated, and the case mouthed of political corruption. Paulette's father belonged to an influential family. Her grandfather was close to then-Governor Enrique Pena Neto. He later served as the President of Mexico between 2012 and 2018. Many believed that the authorities were hiding the truth to save the father. There were tons of other theories too. Around 100 police went through this room of 10 meters. Sniffer dogs searched it and they never found the body. Who do they want to protect? PRD party member Jesus Ortega stated, At the start of the investigation, public sentiment was largely against Lizette. However, two years after the case, she confessed that she had been persistently threatened by the authorities. She would say that at one point, a gun was placed on her head as well. Of course, this did not exonerate Lizette from the case as well. Most people in Mexico still believe that she is the killer. Another theory suggests that she may have killed Paulette along with Mauricio due to the financial strain of raising a specially abled child at a time when money was tight. Many still believed, because of the negative publicity and Buzzbaugh's initial inclination to point fingers at Lizette and Mauricio, that the parents were allegedly involved in their little girl's death somehow. In fact, Lizette and Mauricio ended up turning on each other publicly. The only thing I can say is that for me, it wasn't an accident. I can only speak for myself, said Mauricio. In a separate interview, Lizette cried and said she didn't understand why her husband would be suspicious of her and claimed investigators had possibly manipulated him to turn on her. They have played a lot with their minds. Maybe he didn't have enough trust in me because I have never doubted him, Lizette claimed. In May of that year, Buzz Buzz resigned over how poorly the investigation was handled. And in May of 2017, Paulette was cremated, eliminating much of the physical evidence in the case. To this day, despite multiple loopholes, the official verdict of Paulette's death is one caused by accident. Both of Paulette's parents were the prime suspects, but nothing was proven against either of them. Now over 10 years after her death and disappearance, Paulette's case continues to be shrouded in conflict and controversy as no one feels they've gotten the full story of what truly happened that night. The case of Paulette's death rocked a nation of Mexico. It exposed incredible levels of corruption existing at some of the nation's highest institutions. The fact that people involved would go on to lead normal lives with some holding superior positions in their respective fields is even more shocking. What do you guys think? Who might have been the killer of Paulette Gabara Farah? Her parents? Or the corrupt system? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.